Hey, it's Joel. You know, here on 3D Printing Nerd, we get invited to some really cool projects and some really cool locations, and we get to do a lot of really fun stuff. Probably one of the coolest things I've been invited... I've been invited? You've been, yes. I've been invited? Yeah. Probably one of the coolest things I've been invited to participate in is something called Project Egress. Adam Savage, Jen Schachter, and Andrew Barth have combined forces to put together this really cool celebration of the first manned mission to the moon, the Apollo 11 mission. And what's really great is they're soliciting help from a whole bunch of different makers and creators to try to recreate the hatch from the capsule. And I was one of the lucky few to get invited in. It's a, it's a blessed opportunity and I don't want to let them down. And that's why I have these parts right here. These parts printed in my Protopasta High 5 Blue are one of the latch mechanisms for the hatch door. Let's get them off the build plate. The parts here actually represent one of many different latches that go on the door and they translate this motion into a motion that, well, it latches the door shut. You don't want to let all of your air out into space and so that's why they have these latches. There are a bunch of different parts here. Let's clean off the supports. Give me just a second. I don't think I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> I, I might hurt myself. You know, when removing supports, there's always the option for blood. I imagine when putting this together later, there'll be plenty of options and opportunities for blood. Oh, I mean, we're gonna have to drill things, and screw things, and, and just generally put ourselves into all sorts of dangerous situations. Did the Vegas thing. Yes, done. That's pretty good. Here are the parts. We actually cleared the supports off and they look pretty good. This was the High Five Blue uh, from Protopasta, my blue, and it was printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. These parts were all printed at 25% infill using gyroid infill, and I increased the number of perimeters to three or four. The issue was I, I knew that this was going to be a mechanism that moved. I didn't think it had to incur a bunch of load, but at the same time, I didn't want to fail Adam Savage. That would make me feel really sad, so I knew that this would be okay as long as I threw in a little bit more plastic, which I did. The concept of this is fairly simple in looks, but it's, it's an engineering marvel. So this piece goes in here. This goes this way. This goes, let's see if that fits, just like that. And then this piece goes in the middle. So it translates this motion to this motion because when it's like this, then the Again, it's not fully, <laughs> it doesn't have any metal in there. But when it's like this, then the latch is disengaged. And then as this moves, it translates the motion right there. And then that piece is down, locking the door into place. And if you have these all over the door, then it works a treat. So look at this. We've got all of our plastic pieces here. And while these pieces are in plastic and they probably work, I'd feel much more comfortable See, because they split. I feel much more comfortable if it was in metal. So now that we have all the plastic parts, why don't we go visit Bill Duran, a little special guest that uh, I like to show on the channel here. Bill's got some metal parts for us. He's part of the Egress initiative, and I think it would be a great idea to include his input and get some help putting this together. So let's do that right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hey, we're here. We're here in Bill's shop. Hey, Bill. Hello, Joel. We are both working on this latch mechanism for Project Egress. And while I've decided to 3D print mine, Bill's going another route. Uh, yes, I did 3D print it, but I did it on the Form 2. And the parts came out glorious. It looks so good. Uh, I haven't even sanded that. That's it's just... That's not fair. Mm, so good. But this resin is notoriously brittle. And I don't want my hatch part to break. That'd be terrible. Uh, when everyone else... Everyone else's hatch parts look really good. Uh, so I molded and cast mine. All of these parts uh, were put under silicone to make a two-part mold, like so. That makes a negative cavity so we can pour resin in there and make a copy out of this urethane resin, this stuff right there. Ah, okay. So that's the original, or this is the original, that is the cast copy. Now I do have to drill the holes out again because I didn't want to include those in the mold. So I'll do a little bit of drilling. Um, but this this can take drilling, right? Yeah, it can. This is a urethane resin. It's much more impact resistant than this resin. It's got a little give to it. Got a little bit of flex to it. Ah, so that's why it can take an impact. That's right. Um, I, I can tap some of them. Like this hole here needs to be tapped. So I can go in there and drill it out and tap it with 
my taps right here. Uh, and then I've got all the hardware here too. So I'll end up cleaning these parts up. They're gonna need a little bit of sanding sure. uh, to get rid of the sprue here. There's a little bubble there I gotta fill. Uh, then I can paint these and assemble it with all the hardware. Now the files we got came with little bits for the hardware. Yeah, they did. And you printed yours. I was actually able to get this one printed. This is in my High Five Blue from Protopasta. Mm -hmm. And I did this on the Prusa i3 Mark III. And it's it's a good material. The PLA, as you know, is is rigid, but it, it, it isn't the most impact resistant. Right. And it's not the most uh, robust against temperature swings. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I also printed so those similar parts on the form. Oh. Look at that teeny tiny little fellow there. That is super teeny tiny. Yes, uh, but instead of using this, I machined a copy out of steel. So I have a little wow. lathe, just a little hobby lathe behind me there, and I made it out of steel. Okay. And this is obviously much more durable <laughs> than this little guy right here. Um, I wasn't gonna mold and cast these little parts here. Uh, it was actually a lot quicker to just put some bar stock in the lathe and make them. So I have- Well, you have a lathe, so it makes sense yes, to, to go use sure the lathe. It sure does. So these pins are all uh, steel. Oh, perfect. And yes. so these are the ones we're gonna use in this 3D printed part here. Correct. Right? Uh, to put it all together. And I got all the screws. Jen, who set up the project for Project Egress, included tons of excellent documentation, including links to McMaster Car's website in the exact hardware we needed. Um, so for example, I did need one of these. They come in bags of 100, sure. so I have 99 extra. Uh, but these are for you okay. to put yours together. Thank you. And uh, I've got my drills here, because I imagine some of these holes may need to be enlarged a bit to Just fit the hardware bit. in yeah, there. Yeah, 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 and tapped as well. Exactly, so we have everything we need to get yours going. I'm gonna set mine aside, and we can just focus on getting yours put together. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, while you're doing that, I wanna talk about this. So okay. this here is ABS, and I printed these parts on the FunMat HT, and it's nearly 100 100% infill ABS. And what's great about that machine, because it has a heated chamber, it's almost like an oven, it'll actually encapsulate that heat, and these 100% ABS parts have no warp. They are perfect. And I'm really glad I was able to do that, and we have backups for this, but if this is going to be shown off among other awesome makers who've made great latches and whatnot, I, I want my high five blue shown. So that's why the ABS is cool, but we're gonna concentrate on the blue one. It is very pretty. I think these are all your parts. Oh, wow, just like that. Yes. Uh, so I have an idea of how this goes together, kind of like this, and it looks like uh, that little roller is gonna go in there. Uh, these parts, I know that they slide in. I don't know where this part goes. Okay, cool. You clearly didn't look at the assembly drawing. Not yet, <laughs> not yet. Um, so I, I assembled mine uh, before I molded it. Oh, really? To make sure that everything was good. Oh, good. I didn't want to commit to making a mold uh, if it wasn't gonna work. Sure. So I, I have done the homework, uh, so to speak. <laughs> but that part goes here. It gets attached with a threaded hole, so this screw will ah, go in there. Ah, okay. Uh, in fact, we can do that right now if you want. Sure. Okay. Let's get started. That. that is a wonderful <laughs> little mechanism right there. Hey, look it, and just like that, we're done. A big thanks to Bill for helping out. Appreciate you and your skills and your metal that you're letting me use for this. You're welcome, Joel. I'm so happy that it works, and it works, I think, perfectly. I, I'm glad you got practice for yours yeah. as well. Uh, this is fantastic. Oh, thank you. If you want to know more about uh, prop making and costume making, we have a bunch of stuff at punishprops.com. But if you like the idea of molding and casting so that you can 3D print one thing and then cast multiple copies, we have a playlist that's all just for molding and casting. We can put that actually down in the description. Yeah, so if you want to dive into that, uh, it's a great skill to learn and we've got everything you need to know to get started. And it's, once you get it, over the initial fear, if you have, if you if it if you think it might be too hard for you, I think, like even I could do it. You totally could, Joel. I believe in you. Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> well, in the grand tradition of making, Bill did help and make this, so I now owe him barbecue. Yep. So and ice go? cream and ice cream. So you want to go? Yes. Let's go. go okay. Oh, we're back. Oh man, that barbecue was wonderful. Here's the mechanism right here. And just like we showed you before when it's like this, 
this is not engaged. And then as it takes this motion, it's locked into place and that can't move up. That's a good latch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you, Sean. No problem. That is a good latch. This will work well for Project Egress, and I hope it will not let Adam Savage, Jen Schachter, or Andrew Barth down. What's really great is you'll be able to see this and all of the other maker contributions on the latch once it's put together, I believe on July 18th is when they're doing it, which means Adam Savage won't be Adam Incognito at San Diego Comic-Con this year, but it's for a good reason. It's to celebrate the Apollo 11 50th anniversary. Well, if you made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks for everybody that joined us on this wonderful episode. And a huge thanks to Bill Duran of Punish Props. You know how to get a hold of them. But, you know, just in case you don't, I'll put some links oh, <clears throat> down in the description. Barbecue. <clears throat> Can we go Man, back? It was, it was, it was, it was it wonderful, was, it wasn't was it? It was so good. It was wonderful. Yeah, makers love barbecue food. Hug each other more. Love you all. And as always, high five. See, high five. I'll leave. <laughs> yep. <laughs>